Welcome to the radio. We are back with little Dave for a pre Thanksgiving podcast. So, yep. Our plans for Thanksgiving are like always we'll enjoy a meal, we will do our cardio, we'll eat all of our other meals, and we may or may not train. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's actually funny. I was, I, I was, I totally forgot this week was Thanksgiving. Right. And I, I was, I was looking at my schedule. I was like, I actually have Thursday off training because it's like how my rest days fall for the week. And I was like, yep. well, that's convenient. I don't have to change shit. Right. <laughs> yep. yep. And you know, what's, I think what's great about having the off day on Thanksgiving is like all of your other meals besides the Thanksgiving meal or will be on the smaller side. Yeah. I know some people might say, oh, those aren't small meals. But for you and I, off day meals are definitely smaller than training. Yep. So <clears throat> it kind of lends itself to in my mind like better quality of digestion that day because all you know that even if you had a a really large thanksgiving meal at meal two or meal three or meal four it's not as daunting to have to think about eating three other three or four other meals that are large after that one yeah and the only way you appreciate that is (laughs) the compounding meals of the week of you know, we're not going to miss a meal Monday through Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Like by Thursday, you're like, okay, shit, like it's food starting to get there. So, yeah. 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 Process. And I mean, listen, I mean, Thanksgiving to me is honestly like very conducive to bodybuilding, anyways. So, oh, yeah. I've, I've laughed about this before. Like, I can't tell young people, like, oh, this meal is going to ruin my physique. It's like, God damn it, you eat meat and potatoes every fucking day of the year. Like, you can't figure out how to do that on one day with your family. <laughs> right, right. It's like, I, I don't know what their Thanksgiving is like, but I'm thinking to my mind, like, I'm not a big dark meat turkey guy. Like, I, I have eaten turkey legs in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually prefer the white meat turkey, so I'm like, hey, cool, I'm going to eat that. Then you have, like, what, mashed potatoes, maybe macaroni and cheese and some rolls, and then, you, you know, one or two things are for dessert. I mean, I, I'm personally never going to eat vegetables for the most part. Um so unless you count, I actually the vegetables. only vegetables I really do enjoy are green bean casserole. Oh, okay, yeah. So like I'll eat that, but okay, that's yeah. probably the one time of the year like <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm all right. I, that is not a normal meal plan option for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when your uh, cheat meal is vegetables, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, so yeah, I mean. What do you do? I mean, I've always thought like, okay, after you eat that, like, for some reason, Daxton on Thanksgiving, it, it tends to be decent weather here. So he always wants to go do something physical afterwards, like throw football or something. So I always just try to move afterwards. And that is, to me, the biggest recipe for helping your food move around. Um, yeah, yeah, I think definitely. something else that people get lazy with is they, they cut back their water consumption that day. Um, and for me, I can't speak for everyone, but... If I'm behind on water, it actually blunts my appetite. Um, yeah. I, I don't, I can't tell you the scientific reasons for that or why, but I can just tell you, like, if I get behind on water, that's the fastest way to, for me to get fucked. Um, yeah. Digestion. So, I mean, movement, enjoy it. And I think the last piece here to touch on before we get into our topics is be stress free about it. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. It's what, it's what, just like on the other cheat meal of the fucking year, what you're going to have. Right. It's not it you have that, you enjoy it, you go about you go back on it. You don't continue fucking eating things because they're there. You know, that's like the hard part is there's a point with like the holidays. Like I'm never gonna say no to like unless you're super deep in prep. If right. you're competing at like National. um nationals like, December thirteenth, yeah. this is today the Thursday is not the day to eat your fucking chicken, you know. Yeah, yeah you're definitely gonna bring a Tupperware. But if you're not doing that, most of us are pretty fucking in the off season right now. Agreed. And you're going to have a cheat meal usually once a week. Yep. You know, most people do. Yes. Agreed. But as with the rest of the year, right, you have you go have five guys, you go to bed the next day, you're back on plan. Yep. You know, what really is going to sh- like fuck you up is when you have Thanksgiving dinner and then you're like, oh, man, this pie looks great. You know, and you, that okay, cool. If you take the whole day off for Thanksgiving, not a big deal. But when you wake up on Friday and you're like, man, I really don't want to eat egg whites and oatmeal today. So instead of eating egg whites and oatmeal, you have pecan pie and uh, some other shit, right? And then that day turns into another Thanksgiving. And then 
before you know it, it's Christmas, and every day between Thanksgiving and Christmas, you eat like an asshole. Right. Right. You're not that at that point, you're going to be like, all right, I'm really, I just, you know, you lost what is that four weeks of progress? Yep. So to get out of that, you have to have four weeks of positive to do be at a net zero. Correct. Right. Yep. So that's eight weeks what are fucking lost. Yes. Yep. For what, for what should have been one day, one meal or two meals or th- maybe four. It, it, fun fact here's another cool way to manage that if you want to have Thanksgiving fully off. Don't eat six times. Have, have have three meals like a normal person. Have a breakfast, have a lunch, have a dinner. Literally call it there. You will do far less damage than you assumed unless you start doing what I'll call like electric chair eating and you're just eating till you're sick three times. Then yeah. that will impact it. But I find it something else that a lot of people do to really fuck their digestion is they're like they take that approach and will take the total day off. Well, then they're so used to still eating on their meal schedule. So they just eat garbage every three hours. And that's to me, that's never the right answer. No. Well, then you're gonna, you know, once you, yeah, you, you eat garbage every three hours for the whole day. The next day, you're gonna feel that, right? Yeah. You're not, your digestion's not gonna be. It's you're, you're not a spring chick. You're not gonna spring back. Like, all right, cool. Like real one's gonna come looming, and it's like you're like this. Is, I'm not hungry at all. No. no. You know, so you either you 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 start that vicious cycle, like okay, cool, I'll miss meal one, and then you eat meal two, but you're like, I'm fucking hungry, but I didn't eat meal one, so I'm gonna have some calories here. Right. You know, where's an Oreo? Yes. And like, <laughs> I need a pizza now. <laughs> yeah. And then meal three, you're like, ah, oh, man, I had a pizza. I'm gonna not eat my carbs to this meal. And then meal four comes, and you're like, I need those carbs again. Right. Yes. Yes. And that, then that. your plan is entirely just to fuck around the itis now. Yep. And then, so that's Friday, and then most people justify, well, fuck, it's the weekend. Like, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. My girlfriend and I always go out on Saturday or Sunday. Like. Oh my god! Fuck off! Like, you can still take her on a date and eat steak and potato, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah I think that's that. That just comes down to like maturing and knowing that, like, hey, food's always going to be there, and it doesn't always have to be a binge fest. And oh, if you do still want to go a, on a date on Saturday or Sunday or Friday, even like, there's plenty of great options. Like, you can go to any steakhouse and get chicken or fish or steak. You can go get uh, sushi for fuck's sake. That's not deep fried. Like there's all types of things that you can do to find places that are more conducive to where she can have something, whatever she wants. And then you don't have to eat like an asshole. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go to Outback Steakhouse and get chicken and plain potato. I've done that plenty of times to take her on a date and you can eat a salad and call it a day and no Mm -hmm. one bats a fucking eye. Like, yeah, so thanksgiving enjoy it no stress unless you are in prep like and if you're in prep like you should be so locked in because i mean i think it'll be that's like depending upon what division you're in you're either 13 or 14 days out that's fucking crunch time man like it, in my mind food is irrelevant at that point like you're you're trained to be a professional in whatever division you're in and that, that comes with a sense of responsibility and pride to me and mm-hmm. uh with that, if you're in that case, I do want to speak on that. Don't make the rest of your family miserable because you're eating on a Tupperware. Yep. Show up, drink a Diet Coke with them, eat your fucking meals in the microwave, and do it with a smile on your face because you chose this. Mm. You knew oh, damn you well. Can, you, you can even take your meal and put it on a fucking plate. Correct. Yes. I can, I've done that a couple of times because I prepped in the wintertime. Yep. You know? Yep. And then you're eating chicken and fucking, you know, green beans with nothing on it. Right. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy yourself with your family. Correct. Everyone who picked that show December 13th or 14th knew damn well you were on a diet on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Sorry. It, every show that we pick, if your birthday falls in that time period, guess what? You're going to die on your fucking birthday. Like uh-huh. it's. <laughs> I think so many of the so many competitors like to start thinking woe is me. And I'm like, no, you chose this, man. Like there yeah. were there's you had seven other opportunities this year to turn pro in another show. You just had to start your diet earlier. But you yeah. chose this one for a reason. So embrace it, lean into it, smile on your face. Even if you're tired and lethargic, guess what? Most people eat Thanksgiving and take a nap. Join them. Fucking join them. <laughs> yeah, you know, take the opportunity to take a nap because you definitely don't the chances of you working on Thursday. Are very slim. So use that day. You know, if it's a training day, get you get get that in. Or you know, earlier. Yep. Take a fucking nap. Yep. Yeah. 
Yep. Watch a bunch of football, chill, yeah. enjoy, enjoy the company. Because in my mind, like, you know, that is an atypical day, right? Where you're getting to see people, hopefully who you enjoy spending time with that time melts and goes fast. And next thing you know, you look down at your watch. You're like, man, it's two and a half hours. I get to eat meal four. It's five 30. I get to eat meal six, like fill in the blank. Um, yeah. So embrace it, lean into it. Um, and that's what we do as bodybuilders. Like, it's just the thing, like, you and I will still eat six meals on Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's as simple as fucking that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know another way or a mindset change. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter. All right, on to our topic, and I know this will be a fun one because everyone loves when we talk about gear. Um, and it's an, it's a, I'm really going to call this as an epidemic because it is the truth. Um, mm-hmm. the amount of young kids, and I say young kids, I'm literally in their twenties that are online and asking questions about being one or saying or claiming their own TRT. And I I laugh at that because I feel like it's a weird justification for just when you and I were in our twenties of just saying you're on steroids. Like Mm -hmm. (laughs) it it sounds cleaner or safer or not illegal. (laughs) Maybe the better way. Yeah. Oh, well, people hear TRT and they think, oh, it's testosterone replacement therapy. Guess what? It's the same fucking drugs that top pro bodybuilders take. You're injecting the same testosterone. So the, let, let me start by a little bit of an education. Um, the only way you should ever be on TRT is if you've had your blood work drawn and you're below normal range for your age and gender. Mm-hmm. So maybe do you want to talk about and go into a little detail about maybe what are the blood tests you need to get done to figure that out? And then what you think is an optimal range for testosterone? We can compare that personally. Yeah. Well, man. So if you go in and get your blood work done, right, that full comprehensive metabolic panel, plus your free test, your total testosterone, you know, uh, estrogen and all, all sorts of things like that. Right. And here's another caveat, right? The amount of bros who, like, I've seen, legitly, they go out the couple days before, they go out drinking and they fuck around on their diet on purpose to have a really shitty testosterone score. So they are in that realm. It's hilarious. Right? Because it's just like, especially if you don't need to use it, don't use it. And, and that goes for, like, TRT for sure, right? Yes. The... I mean, I know like the younger generation now, they see so much on TikTok about all oh, trend this, trend that. It's like, okay, cool. Yes. Those are those are definitely things. But it's there's, you know, as things progress, you can add those in. Like it makes zero sense to do trend if you haven't followed a diet for longer than two weeks. Agreed. You know, like it makes it makes zero sense. Yes. You know, or getting on a like I I had one kid ask me, he was like 22, and he was like, should I just, should I take, you know, 10 I use a growth hormone and uh, put, like, my expenses, basically is what he told me. And I was like, how long can you, how long can you do that for? Yeah. Right? Can you do that for three months before shit hits the fan? Yeah. Right? I would probably think about your future a, long, a little bit further than just three months ahead. Agreed. Agreed. You know, yeah. and then like, talking about the optimal range for yes. you know yeah. testosterone, right? Like if you're below, in my opinion, four hundred, yes, I agree. You're not in a great spot. No, no. And the why you're below four hundred? What you know? If you're eating like a jackass, you don't sleep, you're freaking stressed, you know, and you get below four hundred. Yeah. It's not your body's fault with your testosterone, is though. No. No, it's your fault because you eat like a jackass and you don't sleep, right. right? Trying to cover up holes with a drug is why people die. Yes, I agree. You know, but if but if you're eating your food, you're drinking your water, you're not in a deficit, you're in a surplus, and you go get your blood work done and it's below 400, yep. something's up, right? Your body's not working the way it should. That, that is a thousand percent right. And I think I, I, Milo's actually jokes. I think that like if you aren't at a thousand, you need you need it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know the bad thing is I will say this: the range 
for normal or acceptable in the medical community for a male is very vast. It's a large range. Yeah. And you could be on the top end of normal and on the low end of normal and all be in the range to not qualify. But those are two different feelings and those are two different looks and bodies. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times like that's what people don't consider. Um, but, but going back to the TRT thing is the only time you would or should do TRT is if you fall below the normal. And then the goal is to get you back to normal. The problem is these this younger generation or newer generation of steroid users, they want to be super physiological and call that TRT. Exactly. And that, that goes completely against the whole premise of testosterone replacement therapy. And, and I'll tell you a perfect example. When... um. I was a senior in high school, his head wrestling coach, uh, he had all the signs of low testosterone. He got his blood work done and it was, it was in the tank and it, he, he was everything that you described, didn't train, overstressed, ate like garbage, right? <clears throat> he got on TRT and all the kids were like, he was really proud of himself because he was feeling better. He was more energetic. He was losing body fat and all the code kids were like giving him shit and they were like, Oh, well, you're on steroids. It's the only reason you're doing it. And I'm like, bro, do you guys realize that your testosterone levels are higher than his and he's using a drug? Mm -hmm. and, and that's because it's general uneducation, right? They think, oh, well, he's injecting testosterone weekly or he has the pellets or the fucking cream or whatever the doctor that you use gives you. And they think, oh, he's suddenly cheating. No, he's just taking that to be normal. So what, what you have to realize is when you claim TRT, all that means is you're taking testosterone to be into the normal range. Mm -hmm. If you're above normal, you are no longer on TRT because if you were and you're going to a good doctor, he would pull your dose down. Right? Yeah. So let's say he's prescribing you 80 megs of testosterone a week and you divide that into four shots. You're taking 20 milligrams almost every other day. Mm -hmm. okay? If that puts you at 1300, he's going to say we're cutting it to 40 <laughs> or 60. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he would never leave it there and leave you again, going back to the, the word super physiological, because then you're approaching what is no longer normal. Right. And 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 that's what us in the bodybuilding world do. Right. And yep. that's what delineates TRT and steroid use, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I know you have a bunch of like weird TRT clinics that will justify giving you a lot more compounds <laughs> they're just selling you drugs bro i need you to yeah. realize this. <laughs> yeah that one's always a laughable like the the trt clinics are like hey by the way we can uh, prescribe you uh anivar and deca right for your yeah. uh joy pain and your burn wounds <laughs> yeah, right, right you know and that's like <laughs> and it's trt <laughs> you know right, right. but yeah, like you said, how do you think there it's just call it what it is? It's just steroid use. Yes. Yeah. I mean, because listen, I think you and I are of the camp that believe this that, you know, as we age as men, there is definitely a place for testosterone. There's definitely a place for controlling estrogen. There's definitely a place, in my opinion, for like low dose uh, growth hormone and even insulin use, right? Mm -hmm. Because all of those are going to be in working your favor to long-term longevity and keeping you the most healthy, feeling you great, feeling great so that you can exercise and feel good because quality of life to me plays into longevity. Um, and all four of those things that I just touched on there are extremely vital and important for a man to feel good. You have to keep your testosterone in a good place. If your estrogen sky high, we got to balance it. And that doesn't necessarily have to be, Novodex, Arimidex, Aromacin. A lot of times you can do that with like estracort or changing your meals or just getting your testosterone levels right. Um, could yeah. Be that one actually, I, I laugh a lot on the... Right. That another thing is what hurts people so much is just blindly taking anti-estrogens. Oh, what? yes. Yeah. Like I have seen shit. I had one dude, I legitimately, he was like, he, I think he was taking, he was on a cycle. So he was like, 500 milligrams of test and like 300 milligrams of EQ. Yeah. But for whatever reason, he thought he needed a milligram of Arimidex every day. Oh, shit. Jesus. And I was just like, how do you feel? He's like, I don't feel great. I was like, probably because your estrogen is at zero. Yep. You know, and it, instead of like, that's where 
being fucking smart with your usage, right? If something is off, you don't just throw more drugs at it to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Right? If something is off, go get your blood work done. See what's actually off. Have actual physical evidence of what something is off, right? Yes. And then if you have high estrogen, right, maybe lower your dose. Right. Yes. Yep. Agreed. Weird. <laughs> That's not the right answer, Dave. We have to go north. <laughs> right. <laughs> And that then that goes back to another point that you and I bang on here a lot is right is like sometimes more is not better, um, sometimes less is better, and I know that's really hard to comprehend, especially when you're in the heat of it and you're trying to think like oh I, I want to be pro I want to be on the Olympia stage fill in the blank with your goals, um, but you know it's it, it, this this all is such a frustrating topic because it, it goes back to if you aren't getting your blood work done you have no idea, and. If you have no idea about where your blood markers are and you aren't intelligent enough to think like, oh man, like I'm really emotional and I'm crying at weird videos on Instagram and my nipples are sensitive, you and I are going to know right off the bat, like, hey, our estrogen is probably doing something funny. I should probably go get blood work to confirm this before I start to try to self-medicate. And I, I, I know you're the same way as me. It's like, I'm never going to self-medicate if I don't have the have all the data. Yeah. You can... You can use the shotgun approach with that and say, you know what, I'm going to throw all this shit at it to fix it until it gets right. Or you can say, hey, I, this is a perfect time where you and I would recommend using a scalpel. Let's be precise. Like, mm -hmm. it's like when we use a scale to measure rice. There's a reason we do it. And it's because we want to get 50 grams of carbs, for example. In this case, if your estrogen's through the roof and your testosterone is low, okay, cool. We now have that data or baseline. And then if you're not going to go to a doctor and you're going to do it yourself, okay, cool. Like let's start with a lower dose of testosterone and see where that takes us in a month, get your blood work redone or two months, eight weeks, whatever you want to look at it. I, and let's start to look at it that way. But at the end yeah. of the day, I mean, there's so many doctors and clinics and places like Merrick health that can do this for you now. D don't be blind about it. It's, it's definitely worth it because like you were talking about with Thanksgiving and spending your wills. It's the same thing with your hormones. You know, if your hormones are not optimized, either just to feel good or normal, but if you're in a bodybuilding world of trying to be the best you can, like, it's like treading water with a weight vest on. Eventually, you're going to sink below the water and it's not going to work. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, if your progress is trending poorly, blood work is number one. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I thought we would spend some time a little bit on, on that topic. I think the last one to really to put a – a bow on it is, uh, you know, I know everyone like because Seth Ferrosi says like TRT plus, and he doesn't realize. I don't think most people realize he's joking when he says that. Like, he he's literally being funny. It's kind of like when he says he's fifty percent vegan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's a joke. Like TRT plus just means he's using steroids again. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> it, it it it's laughable to me. Um, so. You know what do you do? <laughs> so I, I know I know it's funny because when you and I were that age, steroids I feel like was such a hush conversation, and only the big guys had had that had those conversations. And if they even did at all, it's more of a head nod, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, but now I feel like it's so thrown in our face with people who are uneducated that it's now becoming like training and nutrition where it, the market is oversaturated with poor information. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, dude. The amount of times I've seen people be like the, uh, they put like the order of importance of training diet and gear and gears like first or second. Right. And it's like, do you do realize what like, elevated testosterone and maybe an androgen gets you is you're done you don't need more than that right. but like there is so many things you can do with training yes. like there's not really an end point to that Agreed. and same thing with nutrition yes there's Agreed. so many variables versus like gear you either have it you don't yes yep. right there's not really many other value variables than that like i think it's comical because the shit's not that complicated 
but people want to overcomplicate the fuck out of it. Like, if it was that easy, if it was like, I, we've ranted about this before. If it was just about drugs, being a pro bodybuilder would be like be as easy as taking out a loan, doing a fuck ton of drugs, and winning all your bodybuilding goals. Right. Yep. That never happens. No, not one bit. Yeah, I've I've yet to see someone just <laughs> out drug a bodybuilding competition. Right. Right. Yes. Obviously, people like Boston Lloyd exist. Right. Yes. Yep. You know who tried that side of things, mm -hmm. but like you forget, he also ate and uh, and trained. Right. Yeah. Yes, those could have been better. Right. But he also is not alive anymore. Right. Yeah. You know, and then go go take a gander at Jay Cutler. Yep. Yes, he's not you know three hundred pounds in the off season anymore. Right. But he's a normal fucking old guy now. Yes. Yep. You know, actually, he looks fucking great for how old he is. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, put hit, put him up to any other dude his age, and he's in the top five percent. Agreed. And people are like, "Oh, he's lost all his size." He's like, "Go take a gander at anybody else his age." Right. Yeah. You know. Agreed. Yeah. You know, I think <clears throat> the final piece that I, that came to me when you were speaking that I that I don't really consider, but I think it's probably a point, and the only thing I can really come to terms with why someone would just say oh, I'm on TRT or I'm on TRT plus is that they feel some shame in taking that you know yeah because for a long time steroids were demonized by the media right they you know it's they're going to kill you it's <clears throat> a tons they had definitely tons of misinformation out there when you know like day on NBC or 2020 or any news station gets a hold of steroids they have no fucking clue what they're talking about mm -hmm. you know because in the same clip, they'll talk about trans awareness. And you like, hey, you know the uh, testosterone they're giving 13-year-old girls is the same shit you and I use, right? Like, <laughs> fun fact, they don't. They don't understand any of that. Um, but to, to get back to the shame thing, right, I think a lot of times, you know, they see it in sports and like, oh, they Barry Bonds or Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Jose Canseco, they're cheaters. You know, Lance Armstrong, cheater. And they don't want to be viewed in that light. But with me, I, I kind of view it like this. is like, think of how many kids would come to school on Monday after getting just hammered, drunk, or high and brag about it. And that was like worn as a badge of honor, right? That was illegal at that time. Like, but people viewed that very differently than when someone's like, oh, that's a big motherfucker. He uses steroids. He's a cheater. Like, I, I that never registered to me because I'm like, hey, bro, like it's all drugs. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, your weed goodness. is no different than testosterone. Like, sorry, yeah. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no like that's the nice thing about you know bodybuilding or just life in general is like if you want to do it, have at it. Like that is a hundred percent your choice. Yes. Like, and the you know the the thing with the bodybuilding drugs is they're not addictive. No. no, right? If or you, the chance of overdose on them is very. It's not going to happen, right? Versus like, if I took an entire bottle of aspirin, what I could buy from Costco right. as a kid, if I walked in no. there, someone like if if I walked in there with my mom as an eight year old, and I, you know, had her buy me a bottle of aspirin, I took the whole thing, I'd be dead. Right? No one would bat an eye. They'd be like, "Oh, what the aspirin did it." You know, but you same concept. Like you could take an entire vial of tread yep. right. and put it anywhere in your body, yes. and you won't die from that. No. no, you might have a fun couple weeks, right? But yeah. you wouldn't be dead. No, no. It. I know there is definitely still stigma around it, um, in in our population or society. However, you view that, um, and I think they'll. You know, what's really interesting to me is. We go to Mexico, you and I could walk into a pharmacy and buy whatever we wanted. And that, I guess that shows you the difference in, I mean, as close as Mexico is to the United States, right? It backs up against it. Mm -hmm. And to think that community gives zero fucks, right? Yeah. <laughs> like the amount of guys who I've trained internationally who will like send me videos of like, hey, Chris, like, what do you want me to get? And it's just like they just pan the pharmacy wall. And, and I'm like, that is wild. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, 
so it, it's it's interesting to me like the the thought of some people doing that to feel guilty or to be quiet about it. I, I don't think that you should advertise it to everyone. No different than I would never walk up to someone on the street and be like, hey, bro, how much heroin did you just shoot? Or you have really fucked up teeth. I'm like, how much meth do you use daily? Like, but in our world, it's not weird to like you and I walk into a restaurant and someone be like, hey, how much steroids do you use, bro? All of them. That's always my response. All of them. I'm just using mm-hmm. them all. Because even if we said, I take 500 tests, I take 500 EQ, I take Anadrol before leg days, and I take insulin on my high days. Like, they'd have no fucking clue what we were talking about. No. Like, yeah, you're, you're not wrong. That's usually the best answer is just all of them. <laughs> right. And then they're like, what? Like, did he just say yes? Then? Yeah, I just take all of them, bro. And just, just literally keep walking. Like, sorry. What do you think I should take? All of them. <laughs> no, fuck all <laughs> Right. I think you should eat six times a day and train four days a week consistently for two years. That's what I think you should do. Because it looks like you've never seen a weight room. We on the same page now? Awesome. Cool. Okay. Great. <laughs> All right. So yeah. transitioning off of gear, because I think we beat that to the ground. Um, the, another question that I thought would be interesting to talk about from your perspective and mine, seeing if we can educate some people out there is, you know, you and I have been banging on off days and rest days, but what we I don't think we've delved into is like taking a full off a week when your body needs it. And when I say an off week, that could be anywhere between five and 10 days or four yeah. and 10 days, like just giving your body a legit rest. And that means no cardio. That means no training. And that still means eating your diet meals, by the way, that doesn't mean free unlimited eating. Um, but what, what I thought I would do is, is pose this question to you is was there ever a period of your training with me or before me where you forced yourself to take an off week and you were like found yourself getting restless or antsy or you couldn't enjoy it well i mean i am definitely one of those guys where i am actively thinking about the gym pretty much my entire life right yes so yes it's never been easy Mm -hmm. but it's the same concept to me as eating chicken and rice when I don't want to eat chicken and rice, yeah. right? We we don't do that because I want to do it. Like, we do it for the results it gives us. Right, yes. You know, so it's like, it's that simple in my mind. Be like, yeah, this isn't fun at the time, cool. But also, like, I mean, by day three, yeah, you're like a little bit like, all right, cool, I kind of want to get back to the gym. But you can feel what your body's like, all right, cool, we needed this. Yes. So you're right. like, oh yeah, this is why we did this, you know? Yep. And you know, it goes to it's like, and then you're just hyped to get back to the gym by the end of that. Versus like I've had, you know, like I don't think I've ever had a time where I'm like, oh man, I don't want to be to the gym today. The gym, like the personally, like there's definitely times like I I don't want to like I I feel like I'm like, have so many things going on where I don't want to train. But it's not because I don't want to train. It's just I have so much fucking things happening, right? You know what I mean? Yes. It's like and, one of those things where it's like, it would be so much easier to take an off day, knock all that shit off my plate, and then fully focus on training. Yes. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. But, you know, having that time, a little, you know, that one week a year or whatever, where or, you know, every, you know, 20 weeks or so, that week off is like, it's just a little blip, yes. you know? Right. And realizing, you know, like, you know, it's like a pause in the stepping. It's not even a step back. You know, you're just not walking for a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And letting your body, your, especially your brain, your mind, like the amount like that sometimes needs. Yes. Agreed. You know, it's not always just your body what needs a little bit of the of the break. You know, it, it's always, this is how I've looked at it. It's, it's that saying that goes, absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? Like, and it's mm-hmm. like you said, those first two days, like they almost feel like a normal rest day for me. By day three, I'm like, man, I really needed that. Four, five, six, I'm starting to really think about, okay, I'm looking forward to Monday. I'm going to train back. I'll probably do these exercises or I'll, I definitely will do these exercises. And you start to like almost fantasize a little bit about it. And then let's say it's a Sunday. It's my final off day. Like I really make an effort to be like cognizant and present with my family and be like, hey, cool. Like, because when I wake up tomorrow morning, that brain is flipped right back one to eat two meals, go train, come home, eat four meals, go to sleep. 
Um, yeah. And it, it's like you said, <clears throat> it's not just the body, it's the brain that you don't have that positive pressure of going there and saying like, man, I got to hack squat this much today. I have to dumbbell press this much. Like it's able to just step back, enjoy the current situation you are in life and take a deep breath. And uh-huh. then, and like you said, it's, I mean, if it's, if, if you take two weeks off a year, that still means you have 50 weeks to train. <laughs> like, I don't know what that percentage of the year is, but it's not much. <laughs> yeah. Like, so it, I try to do with anything I do in life, even if, like you said, you know, if you don't really 100% dig it, you just have to appreciate it. And yeah. know that when I come back, I'm going to rage absolute hell on those weights. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, and then that brings me peace of mind. It's like, okay, cool. Like, if I can take this pause, how much further is this going to allow me to train even harder? Yep. It's no different it's, than, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, and exactly that, that pause, it, I know for a fact we've all been to this place where we're training so hard where we eventually hit a wall yes. on the buildup of things what need recovered, what aren't fully recovering. Yeah. Right. So if you're pushing hard enough, you're gonna find this place. If you aren't pushing hard enough, yeah. Yeah. you know, you that's different concept. That's a different time. Yes. But you know, that step to the side or like, okay, let's fully get recovered. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know. Yes. Yep. That off week is a great week to work on mobility work. Yep. All the stretching you've been neglecting. Yep. Massage. You know, yep. And yep. really get and then let your brain have that rest because your your see your nervous system, right? If you've been if you've been training that hard, it sometimes just needs a break. Yes. Agreed. You know? And yep. if you like the reason why I think both of us like that so much is neither of us the concept of deloading is great. The application of it is terrible. Agreed. Because what most people do is they start pulling back on shit as a deload, but then they continue training that like that for the next 20 weeks. Yes. Yep. And they make zero progress. Agreed. Because they're worried about missing a week of the gym. They miss fucking they miss the next 20 weeks of actual hard training. I view that very similar to sickness. You mm-hmm. know, people come back from sickness too soon. They get sick again. They have to miss three weeks. Yep. Where if you would have taken four days off, you would have just missed four days. <laughs> yep. Like it, it's the same shit. And I, you know, I said this to you before we hit play, as I said, the two biggest, biggest obstacles in bodybuilding and life are patience and time. And <laughs> most don't want to realize that they want to fight yep. it. And patience and time are undefeated. <laughs> I believe <Yeah>. that. <laughs> and as you and I have said, with everything in bodybuilding, you have to pay the piper at the beginning or the end. Yeah. And you choose that destiny, bro. And mm-hmm. a, a week off will never make you smaller. It will no. deflate, you'll deflate a little bit. I'm not trying to say you're going to look big and juicy as you always do. You will deflate a touch. All that shit comes back when you roll through one set of workouts. So that by the time you train chest, back and shoulders and legs, bro, you look the fucking same. You lost nothing. You just deflated a little bit and it's fine. Like you, I think the only, you know, the only person that cares about that is you. No one else fucking cares. Your coach doesn't care. Your wife or spouse doesn't care. Your kids don't give an absolute fuck. Most don't even notice. Mm. Like, I've taken two weeks off before and I've had people be like, damn, Chris, this is the biggest I've ever seen you. Like, well, that's funny. I didn't train in eight days. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they don't. But me, I'm like, oh, my arms are a little bit smaller. My shoulders, they don't look like this cat from the side. Like, I'm obsessing about all this little stupid shit. And guess what? That stress does nothing positive for my body or brain. Mm-hmm. So, if that's you and you find yourself not enjoying your off time, I think the logical thing that most people think is, oh, fuck it, I just won't take an off day or off week. Or, and eventually, that's going to catch up to you with an injury. Or just mental burnout to where you cannot progress. Yeah. And then it's like, cool, so now I'm just training like a maniac to maintain my current physique. Good luck doing that for a year or more. That sucks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So any tips or advice you can give people to maybe um, mentally let them come to terms with an off week or how to get through that week 
I hate saying get through because if you're getting through it, you're not enjoying it. Um, yeah. Honestly, is hate that time to, you know, do stuff what you don't normally, cause I mean, like, not what training takes up a giant chunk of time, but I'm constantly thinking about it. Yes. You know, I wake up and I'm like, oh man, I got to train after meal four today. Okay. So, and that's where my day starts. So it's like, look, everything I'm doing is for that training session. Yep. You know, and versus like rest days are a little bit like if I sleep in and have my meal a little bit later, it doesn't kill me. Nope. <laughs> you know, but on um, training days, yeah, that's, that makes a really big difference, you know? So I get a little bit more leeway that way. And I could have just like, all right, we're just going to chill, you know? And, you know, I'll use that extra, that, that you know, time to do things that like I want to do, but yeah. I've just been putting off because of, you know, I deem training more important, yeah. you know, whether that is like, you know, cleaning up things, what may need to be cleaned up a little bit better. Great. You know, running through uh, errands, what like you've just been putting off yeah. and, you know, like, taking time with your girlfriend or your wife, you know, because there's definitely, you know, go find something, get, legitly do this, go take that day where you're going to go to the gym and be like, hey, babe, you want to go to this butterfly expo? Yep. 10 bucks, she'll be like, what the fuck? Hell yes. <laughs> you're right. You know? Know, what, that expo doesn't have to revolve around, okay, Dave has to eat again in two and a half hours and we have to be home by four so he can train at 530. And then he's going to be useless afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just going to be go to that. Have Maybe have bring a meal with you or whatever. Maybe not. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I, I always say this, like I'll in a time like that, I'll take Angel to a movie and then not take my food with me. I'll be right before we leave. And even if that means my next meal is stretched to four hours, just to make her not have to watch me in a Tupperware for the 47th time or sneak it in her purse. She'll be like, thank you. I appreciate that. I get it. She's like, I would never ask you to do that, but it was nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know, something else is that I think is beneficial is maybe book a family vacation or just a couple's vacation. And then you don't have to train the whole time. How, how great is that? Like your significant other wouldn't know what to do with himself. What do you mean? Chris isn't worried about training and working out and making sure every meal is to the second, right? Like, yeah, it's cool, right? Uh, all little things like catch up on sleep. As you said, sleep in. If you are antsy during your training time, take a nap. Yeah. Simple as fucking that. And generally speaking, right, we're pretty busy outside of that training window. Yeah. Right? So just do something what you would you want. What If that means scheduling a massage during that time or scheduling yourself to stretch, yeah. right, to do something. Because outside of that window, most of us, I mean, we got to go to work. We yep. got family obligations. We got work obligations. So it's like we've already put aside that time for some like training. So if you're super antsy during that time, do something what you want to do. Yes. You know? Right. It's pretty simple. Right. It's just like, all right, cool. Like, we're just gonna spend the, you know, this you know, hour stretching, doing yoga, or hell, even just watching a fucking TV show. Yeah. Agreed. Further your education for Christ's sake. Take that yeah. week. And literally get CEUs for something if you're in the training world or for your work or something that'll make you more money. Like, yeah, you could take an online marketing class on how to use social media more effective for fuck's sake. Yeah. And that's chilling, resting, and your mind's distracted. Like, or read a book, like for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like when people get in these off weeks and they're sitting around they're like, oh God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm like, I've already cleaned my house. Can you just rest? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like the, the ultimate thing that I think so many competitors do wrong is like they treat show week like a normal week. And I'm like, I need you to chill. Yeah. Honestly, I don't have any more cardio to do. And all my meals are made and I'm in a hotel. What do I do? I'm like, can you just lay there and prop your feet up for me? <laughs> yeah. Take a fucking nap. <laughs> right. You know, nothing, nothing is more hectic to me than being with a competitor and they're like pacing around and they're antsy and they're like, all right, you want to do this? You want to do that? I'm like, I want you to do nothing. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to sit on my computer and work. I need you to lay down. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very, that's very, I know, I know maybe I don't understand that hectic, chaotic brain sometimes that people may have, but whatever you find that silences it, lean into it. You know, like, 
is it a hobby? Is it reading? Is it guided meditation? Is it sex? What like what? I'm trying to think of all things. You could take a dog walk. Like by the way, that isn't like interval cardio. That's just a dog walk at a slow pace. <laughs> so you know, maybe go sit at a park and read a book and just take in some vitamin D. I, I don't know a ton of the research about like grounding and shit where you like put your hand or your feet and your hands in soil and things. But dear God, like find something to do. Like you yeah. said. Angel and I used to do like candlelight yoga together. And that is like so non-strenuous and de-stressing, like super simple. And I think it was like five dollars a person for an hour and a half. It was super yeah. enjoyable. Um you go watch a movie, watch Netflix, like binge binge watch Harry Potter. I don't know, all things that I would think would be fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you're in an off week or you're scared to take one, like lean into it, uh, embrace it. And I really believe that like when you come back to training that next week, one, you will be so fucking sore, for... <laughs> but your passion for bodybuilding and training, even though it may not have been dull, it will reignite that fire super hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's like you said, the Q and I always look forward to training, but there are definite things that get your fucking gas tank topped off, you know? And, and to me, after an off week is one of the best times to really catapult into that next level of progress. So, yeah. If you guys have any questions, please post them below. Um, that's Dave and I's thoughts on TRT versus steroid use and then off weeks. So we're going to keep pumping these bad boys out. Hope everybody has a good Thanksgiving. I know we will. And yep. uh, next time, Chris, Dave, we are done. <laughs>